Sorry, trying to figure out how to record. So record to the cloud, record to my computer. We'll just pick one. All right, I told you I was stretching my uh, technology know-how there, David. So we're gonna stretch it even further and see if this works. So as opposed to the stale old introduction, we're going high tech with this. So hopefully this will work and everybody can see this. David George Rook, also known as that gratitude guy, is a former Nordstrom store manager with a long history of motivating and inspiring people to be the very best they can be. David draws from his own experiences of learning to pilot a private plane, jumping out of planes, becoming a national champion hydroplane driver, flying off of cliffs, and leaping over bridges, all to test what he himself was made of. Ultimately, he considers his greatest achievement as being the very proud father of what he calls his rock star son. David Brook knew from as early as 19 years of age that he wanted to become a speaker to help inspire and motivate others. That drive became a passion to champion and illustrate the immense power of a gratitude mindset. With over 1,000 videos posted on YouTube and an equal 1,000 subscribers to his channel, that gratitude guy has become a leading influencer in transforming people's lives. His story is terrific, very relevant and relatable. You inspired a room full of people with developmental disabilities and their families. David now travels the world speaking about gratitude and just recently completed a national coast-to-coast -to -coast tour. One of those events boasted the attention of 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington State. Now an international best-selling author, David's written many books on the subject of gratitude, including the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal and Six Word Lessons to Embrace Gratitude. Studies have shown that when practicing an attitude of gratitude, people experience less aches and pains. Extensive clinical research has shown that individuals who are consistently grateful enjoy a happier existence and better relationships. So if better relationships, better sleep, better physical, mental, and psychological health sound good to you, and you'll want to pay close attention to what you're about to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome that gratitude guy, David George Brooke. Hmm. All right. All right. High tech. Take definitely, it. Definitely gone a little high tech on you here after all this. Uh, just the audiences keep getting bigger and bigger. So, and I've been to Mill Creek a couple times before and, uh, mentioning Debbie and just various people I've met there of course Kevin a number of times so this is called conquering quarantine fatigue through gratitude I send out a Monday morning minute to, if you guys aren't on that you'll have a chance to sign up for that later on um, before I wrap up my sister got it one day and she goes you know I noticed something about your Monday morning minutes um, they're always about gratitude and I go I'm the gratitude guy what do you think it's gonna be about how to plant a tulip I mean, it's like this is the whole theme here is how things work from gratitude. So, but I will ask you, this is very interactive. So that's the old line you heard a guy say, it's very interactive. Don't just act interested, be involved. So I need you to have a couple of things. I need you to get a piece of paper, a pen, your cell phone, and your, one of your hands too, whichever one you want. And sometimes you may remember I do these little cards. If you have a card, that's kind of cool to have too, but at least a paper and a pen and your hand, as I said, and your cell phone, which you're gonna need. So, need. so and I'd love to use the chat too. I think most everybody's on the screen. I see um, Evergreen Traders is not, so that you can use the chat. We'll use the chat as well as in the screen, but just to start with, high five, if you can like hear me loud and clear. If you can like hear really well, perfect. Everybody's gonna hear, good. So I love to get people involved as much as I can. And so uh, one more quick thing for, before we start as well, index finger if you're sick of quarantine, if you're like sick of this whole thing. <laughs> yep, again, it's a, it's a full house. Of course, last week, I, one guy didn't understand that I got a different finger, that was a little upsetting. So I had to make sure it real clear it's the, it's the index finger, but I think we're all a little tired of it. So my whole purpose and intent today, and as I was saying to Kevin in the, the group earlier, I'm blessed enough to now be doing two or three of these a week. And it's just thrilling to me to, go, to give somebody sort of a vehicle and some ways to deal with this so we're not going around with our heads down. And I will tell you, when I've spoken to you before, if you may or may not remember the story, I suffered a lot of loss in my life. My mom and my dad, my wife passed away. The two sons you saw that are now 26 and 36 
were four and 14 when Dana passed away. So for me, the quarantine and the coronavirus, unprecedented for any of our lives we've seen, but was another obstacle that I thought, how am I gonna process this and deal with it? And like a lot of people, that first few days was pretty strange, just about mid-March staying in your house or condo and watching the news and that kind of thing. So a couple of things we're gonna cover, it all depends on how you look at something, something I'm very big on, harnessing gratitude's power, the science of gratitude, a gratitude journal if you want to help yourself, help others, and finally sharing gratitude. So first thing I'm going to talk about is it does depend on how you look at something. And when I'm live, when I've seen you before, I always take the glass and you can, you can use that. And I do a thing where you do your hand like this so you can see which direction it's going. But it does depend on how you look at something. We've all met people that are really positive and are really negative. I'm not really fond of the negative people. I'd rather be around somebody. There's so much to be negative about. It's so easy to go down that path, but it takes a little more energy to be the person that sees that glass half full. And so it is a choice. And anytime somebody starts a sentence with you and they said, you just don't understand, you're going to hear an excuse that's going to come up. And, and I'd rather be around the person that let's, let's make the lemonade out of the lemons and so forth. So a good example of that is I'm, I'm doing a race across the floating bridge many years ago and I was doing a 10K, doing a lot of 10K races. And I went from Medina all the way across the floating bridge up to Husky Stadium. And I think it was a 10K, 6.2 miles. And I'm halfway across the bridge and I can see all these people in front of me. Little kids are going by and it's raining and I, I'd been training and I was getting passed by these little, little kids, as I mentioned. And I could see those two fountains, but it's all these people. And I just felt terrible. I just, I didn't feel good that day and stuff. But then as I was running along, I looked behind me and I could see all these thousands of people across the bridge up to where the old toll plaza used to be by the Dina. And, and I turned back around, just thousands of them. And I turned around and I thought, you know, here's what's interesting. If all the people in front of me were not here today, I would be in first place. I mean, what if all those people had just said, I'm not going today. I don't feel right. I'm not going to make it. it just happen to be all those people. Guess who'd be out front? So it just depends on how you look at something. And as I mentioned, like the coronavirus, I, did, I do videos all the time. I do two or three a day. As I said, if you haven't gotten that Monday morning minute, I'll, I'll get you signed up on that before we wrap up. But here is one I did recently, silver linings of coronavirus. And it all depends. And what is there to be grateful? A guy comes up to me to talk uh, somewhere along the line. I was in a, actually, no, where was I? I can't remember. I saw, oh, I know, downtown. And what is there to be grateful for? Just tell me that, Mr. Gratitude Guy. And it was kind of sarcastic and stuff. But I thought of it. So I went through this and I thought, look at this technology. Look at this Zoom thing that we're doing where we all feel like we're a foot or two apart, yet we're at all different parts. And I've got ones go around the country. So people are at all different parts of the country. Cell phones, the texting, the apps, all that kind of thing. All this extra time created with our families. I know it's tough with school and people that have school-aged children, and that's, but they're together. That'll be some time they'll never forget the rest of their life. These advances in science, the vaccine's probably going to be around pretty soon, and that may not have happened 20 or 30 years ago. This family dinner time has made a comeback. I remember growing up, I'm pretty old, and I remember having family dinner, and I miss that, and that's come back. All this personal contact face-to-face, -face, we miss hugs and handshakes. We're probably all going to do this now, I guess, going forward, but eye contact and smiles and things like that. And just the efficiencies. I did a, met with a guy that used to go out in the north end of town and take me an hour to get to Starbucks, an hour with him, and an hour back to Issaquah, where I live. And I met with him the other day on Zoom, and it was one hour. And I just got two extra hours from the traveling back and forth by doing that. And of course, the face-to-face -face will make a comeback, but this has really changed. It may maybe changed forever how we do this. This whole idea of conveniences. I haven't been in a grocery store in four or five months. I just get a knock on the door and there's Amazon Fresh. It's so convenient and so handy. All being all in this together. And I look at a lot of groups. I'll speak from small groups to really big groups. And we think about the connection that we've gotten that's been brought together by this pretty much devastating uh, coronavirus or COVID-19. And I think embracing gratitude is number 10 is the last one I talk about. And what it does, which I feel so strongly about is it realigns your priorities. It makes you really realize what's important. And when you think about some of the things we thought about before, and I talk about people that are like keeping up with the Joneses or trying to chase the, uh, the cat chasing its tail, who has the biggest boat, the biggest house, the biggest uh, amount of money in the bank or whatever. And I say all the time, gratitude turns what you have into enough. And so it really does make you rethink some of those things. So with that in mind, we're going to do the first exercise, get your paper and your pencil. And here's what I want you to do. And, and this is hopefully, I think most of you are all by yourself too, because I do this in pairs when they do it, but now I'm doing it by yourself on, on uh, Zoom. So on the piece of paper, I want you to write these two words, you are, Y-O-U-A-R-E. 
You are. Just write them anywhere up near the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 30 to 60 seconds. And I want you to pretend you are your mother or your father or your biggest cheerleader. Just picture you're one of those people. And I want you to have that person in the form of you writing down how they see you. You are talented. You are energetic. You are effervescent. Whatever that person would say about you, mom, dad, or biggest cheerleader, write as many things as you can that they would say about you and write them down. I'll give you 30 seconds. Go. Okay, and stop. And hopefully you could be writing for a long time, but uh, I want to keep uh, on a tight time schedule here. So now it took you a few minutes to, or half a minute or whatever it was to write those down. But I want you to just think in your brain. I want you to reread those five or 10 things that that biggest cheerleader or mother or father described you as. Reread them again, and then tell me if you feel better about yourself by giving me a high five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold on. That was easy. Yep, that was easy. That's what that's what <laughs> gratitude will do for you. Thank you for those high fives there. That's what gratitude will do. It focuses on everything you had. I just mentioned gratitude turns what you have into enough. Gratitude helps you to focus on what you have and not worry what you don't have. This keeping up with the Joneses. I lived in Mill Creek for a while, by the way, and there's a lot of keeping up with the Joneses out there. So and there are in many places, but it really helps you to focus on that. Why we are so hard on ourselves, I will never understand. I will never get it. We have something about we just beat the holy heck out of ourselves. I don't understand it. That's why focusing on what you have keeps you focused on those blessings and how that person saw you is a good example. There was a... Um, a word I used to use to describe myself, and I've had a relatively successful career in things I've done, and yet you wouldn't have known it by asking me. And I'm used to owning my own airplane and national champion hydroplane, all this kind of stuff. And I'll tell you, I used to describe myself with a word that I will not say to this day, but I used to say it all the time, but I will spell it. And I used to call myself an L-O-S-E-R. And I couldn't understand it how how do you advocate for yourself if nobody, nobody else is going to advocate you if you don't advocate for yourself? So watching that and seeing what you can focus on, the blessings that you have is why it makes such a big difference. So harnessing gratitude's power. So go to the chat, and I would like you to do this. What has been in the chat your best coping mechanism through this pandemic? What has been the thing that you have, probably have several things, but what's been your go-to item that has helped you maybe more than anything else. I know, again, I know there's many, but I just kind of want to share that with everybody and see what people say. And humor, thank you, Gary, that's very true. Uh, hum got two humors, man, that's really good, Stephanie. All right, and started running. Yes, I've been, I've been doing a lot of running too. That's any exercise you can do, and man, it's toasty out today. Uh, let's see, Debbie, my good friend Debbie, Zoom, happy hours with friends, yes, that's very true. Uh, from looks like Kevin work. Yep. If you, especially if you like it, Mike Todd family, my daily conversations with friends from Kathleen. So those are some great examples. And the homework I'm going to ask you to think about doing is there's certain combinations of things I think that are really powerful. You know, they say it's sweet and sour and there's all these different things, but I want to encourage you to do something that I call the gratitude walk. And it's the combination of gratitude and exercise. So I'm getting up to an age where all of a sudden there's books everywhere that say the number one thing that's going to keep you young is to exercise and you shouldn't be drinking and smoking and doing drugs and all that, of course, but the exercise thing. So I'm going to encourage you to start what I call a daily gratitude walk. I do 10 to 15,000 steps every day. I did 16,000 on Saturday and 17 on Sunday. And then of course I couldn't walk on Monday, but anyway, I got a little carried away, but at least do your eight or 10,000, go for your bike, go for your run, go for your jog, walk, whatever it might be, and focus on three or four things that you're grateful for on that day. You don't have to shout them to the world, but just run them through your brain and make it, it'll make such a difference. 
And speaking of the brain, I will tell you about the science of gratitude. It is amazing the research, probably no big surprise here that I've done a lot of research on this. And these are some of the things that have come out in the last just handful of years about how gratitude affects you physically, mentally, physio psychologically, and so on. So here's some of the results from the study. Appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains, lower blood pressure, and less depression. Big thing on depression, anxiety, a lot of the things people are suffering with as a result of the economic aspect this as well. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, just talked about that, and schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. I ought to repeat that one. Wow. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities to appreciate what we currently have. It's all about focusing on what we have right now and not worrying about that, like the carrot and the donkey never gets to the carrot. It's just, a, it's like that cat chasing its tail. Happiness is rarely constant. So although happiness is a fantastic goal, gratitude for the tools that get you there are more important. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for and the circumstances of life become unpleasant. Think coronavirus, think quarantine, think COVID-19, whatever you want to label it. We are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards. That's why I love that and I ask people when I'm in person to put it on a card because most people want to hang on to that when we pair up. So now it was your mother or father or biggest cheerleader and if somebody sees you like that it's amazing to think, wow, I didn't even think myself because we're such hard critics on ourselves and pull ourselves to these impossible standards. We continually compare ourselves to other people. Bigger boat, bigger house, better husband, better wife. It's just crazy. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, your health, your body, and your progress, the less anxiety you will experience. So that's some of the things that make such a big difference. So next exercise, this one is going to be writing some things down, and then it's also going to be homework. So I'm going to give you 30 to 60 seconds for this. And somewhere on that paper, just pick out another little section. I'm going to call this the, the top most memorable experiences of your life. Now, what I want you to do is write as many as you can. I'm only going to give you about 60 seconds. The most memorable mental, or excuse me, personal, professional, work, kids, family, whatever it is, the, the top most memorable experiences, events of your life, right? As many as you can. I'll give you about 30 to sec 60 seconds. Go. Okay, and stop. And I know you could go on a lot longer, which will bring me to the homework. What I would like to ask you to do is take that list of five or 10 or whatever you wrote down, the most memorable events of your life. And I would like you to expand it out to one of three numbers, 25, 50, or 100, depending on whatever you can do. And I want you to do this in the next week. So today is Tuesday. So promise me that you'll do it by a week from today, which is next Tuesday. And then as you do it, Put it in the proper priority. So we've got the most important thing at number one, all the way down to 25, 50, or 100. I did this in the middle of this pandemic uh, a number of weeks ago, and I came up with 100 most memorable events in my life. And even though I lost my wife, re just re re uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Bouncing back from that, surviving, that's the word I'm looking for. Surviving that is in my top 10 or 15 things because I didn't think I was going to make it. And I don't go into detail that much anymore because I just, I just tell that to people, let them know I've been down a lot of bad paths and you too, including me and anybody else can bounce back from pretty much anything. If you have gratitude as a mindset and you plug in some of these other things that can help you. But when I did it, I had it in the priority order and I put together a hundred things and I looked at it and I'll tell you, it really helps you. 
Because just when you think you've compared yourself from somebody else and they've gotten more, they've traveled more, they have a bigger car, as I said, the bigger house, the better wife, the better husband, whatever it might be, more money. And then you look at all those things you do. And whether it's 25 or 50 or 100, it doesn't matter. But I will tell you, it'll be such a great thing for you to focus on on those days when you're not feeling quite as well. Put it on a Word doc, put it on an Excel spreadsheet or something. And sometimes if it's a bad day, even if you're wake up, waking up at three in the morning and you can't sleep, you can keep something like that. There's a couple other things as well, close to your bed to look at if you're having a bad day and it'll make such a big difference. So another one of those homeworks, I'm hoping that you will do that for me. So next thing I wanna talk about is the centerpiece of everything I ever talk about when it comes to gratitude is a gratitude journal. This is the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. In fact, I remember, taking a picture with somebody at Mill Creek that had gotten this journal. I'm trying to think what her name was. I'm pretty good with names too. Anyway, and we took it up front by the, uh, where the uh, event was and we drew the cards. And, but this is so important. So how many people here, high five, have heard of a gratitude journal? Okay, most, yeah, it looks like pretty much everybody. Okay, because I, when I started this, not many people had heard, of grat had heard of a gratitude journal. So it makes such a difference. It is, there's a little saying right here in the upper left hand corner says if you think about it it's like a dream if you talk about it it inspires you but if you write about it it empowers you now all this stuff with these computers i've got my computer here i got a tablet here i got my phone here we got all these things i can voice call kevin down, thank him for tell, inviting me to no creek chamber i mean it'll write it down you got all this stuff you can do but there's something about taking that pen and writing down, I am so grateful. It was nice to see Debbie again today. I haven't seen her in a while. You know, there's the, the type of thing that plants in your brain. So if you don't remember from last time, I will show you how this is formatted. And it says, gratitude, the day and the date. So today is Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. Daily number we'll come back to in a second. A couple of lines for special occasions and activities that are going on. So you don't need a diary. You can put that in to keep track of that. Five or six lines for what you're grateful for. Sentences, bullet points, whatever you want to do that you remind yourself. People ask, I love the question. I've been this, doing this for a while now. I looked the other day, I've done like 650 talks now. And people say, well, do, do I write this, the same thing the next day? Well, are you still grateful you're healthy? Uh-huh. Okay, well, you might want to put that down. That's, that, that may be something that you want to be healthy every day. Or maybe you just want to be healthy occasionally. And then you can just put that down. And so then there's two lines at the bottom that says the highlight of the day. We'll get to that in a second. And then the right-hand side is your gratitude intentions. And that's what you're going to be grateful for, but you haven't even had it happen yet. Because if you put down something you're grateful for, your subconscious mind will take you towards that goal. I will tell you very briefly on this right-hand side of my journal, I used to talk, I'd write down, I'm grateful I'm speaking to hundreds of people. And then it was 1,000 people. And then I said 10,000. Then I went and talked to 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base lewis McCord. Then it was 100,000. And I've gotten some videos of that. Now I said a million. My YouTube videos have gotten a million views. So it plants your brain to focus on what's going to happen in the future. So it's very cool. So here's your exercise for this. So take that same piece of paper again. And I kind of wish this was a card, but that's okay. And I want you to just think, and this again is a very personal exercise. Some of the stuff I do in person we share, but this is all just you, yourself, and I, the person in the mirror. I want you to think right now, what is your daily number? So your daily number, as I describe it, is one to 10. 10 is one of the best days of your life, and one is one of the worst days of your life. So I want you to write down a number. You can do halves. You might be a seven and a half or a nine, you might be a four, you might be a two, you might be a nine and a half, you might be a 10. Whatever that number is, write that down on the paper and put a circle around it. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds and here's what I want you to do. Hopefully in priority order, I want you to write as fast as you can the things that you're most grateful for. If you can only write one thing, write it down. If you only write two, write it down. In priority, write them as fast as you can, 30 seconds, go.
Okay, on stop. And of course, I'm always trying to gauge. Some people are riding fast, some are riding slow, but that at least gives you a flavor. So you're writing them, hopefully, again, in priority order, what you're most grateful for. Now, just like the one about how you were having the, the biggest cheerleader describe you, took you a minute to write them all down. I want you to reread them very slowly to yourself, nobody else. Nobody else is in on the exercise except you. And then when you're done reading those, I want you to write down another daily number after reading those five or 10 things. Could be the same number or the number could have changed. But read those slowly down and write another number at the bottom, possibly the same number, possibly it changed. And then put a circle around that at the bottom. Okay, so by the high five, the high five rather in the screen, the number from the top to the bottom, how many people's number from the top to the bottom stayed the same? Any high fives? Okay, Kevin. How many people from the top number to the bottom number after reading those to the bottom number, the number went up? High five. This is like the best group. Sorry, Kevin. This is the only thing I have to say about that is, once again, that was easy. yes, it was. Because you know what? That's how much it can impact you right away. Amazing. So this journal takes five minutes to write in it every single day. And maybe six if you want to expand a little bit on the gratitude intentions. But that's five minutes. So imagine if your number went up, whatever your number was, if your number went up from just a few minutes, uh, I went up for just writing 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Imagine what four or five minutes where you could expand on a little do, will do for you. And we're talking about a world where it sucks in a lot of places. I did a video the other day, suck, 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 succeed was the name of the video. And I just, that for some reason, that word suck is always stuck around. But it makes such a difference and it gets you to, again, focus on what you have. I never tell people what to write in their journal. But I will tell you, for me, the number one thing is always my health. I turned seven zero in January, and I feel pretty fortunate to be just chomping away and still being able to go out and run and doing the things that I can. I've taken good care of myself, and I'll tell you, a lot of it is taking care of this piece up here between your ears, and so it makes such a difference. And it's funny, too, because when I'm in person, again, we were talking about Zoom earlier, it's, it's just a little different. I get to sell my books and journals, and, and I'm drawing the blank. I want to say Stephanie, but that, bought, that got the journal back at Mill Creek uh, Chamber or Business Association. And so they come up and they buy the gratitude journals. By the way, I put a link in the chat. It's got all the ways you can contact me. There's a link for the gratitude journal on Amazon if you want to get one. I've got some, all my social media stuff as well. But anyway, so I'm, up, I'm selling the journals. And the girl, uh, this, uh, this girl next to me kind of eases this guy over. And the guy comes over and he goes, is this your journal? Like the one you write in? And I, I went, um, yeah. And then I look at it. And I said, yeah, don't look too closely, but you can look at it. So he thumbs through and he goes, man, you write in this every day. And I, I went, did you just hear the talk? Have you been like listening to anything I've said? No, I, I just write in it occasionally because I don't want to feel good occasionally. You though, I suggest you write in every day because that's going to probably help you out. So that's what a difference it makes. But I will tell you how strongly I feel about this when I think about, I was on a call about an hour ago some big company and they're, they're doing a book and they wanted a quote and stuff like that. And they said they're working on coaching and mental health and that more people need to get access to coaching and more people need to get access to mental health. And I will tell you, I had some pretty firsthand experiences with mental health and my mother was manic depressive. It's now called bipolar, but she was manic depressive and she would always just do all this crazy stuff and burn everything in the house and so forth. And she did something that was particularly frustrating to me is she'd call me on the phone. I was in high school and college back then. And she would take her pills and she'd like shake them next to the phone. And she'd go, I need you to come over and see me in the next half hour or I'm going to eat all these sleeping pills. Do you understand, David? And I was the one she was closest to. There was five of us. Somehow it got to be David. And she'd just shake them like that. And I'd me. So what did I do? I'd go over there and talk to her. I didn't know what to do. What if she did that? And then I'm the one that's to blame. But anyway, so she eventually then passed away from cancer. So it was very sad. And as I said, my dad took his own life. So it was, the parents were a little bit tough on the role model part. But I got some of that left over. And I remember, so now that you see how I establish a daily number, I remember going out to the Burlington Chamber of Commerce in north of Mount Vernon 
And I woke up that day, I had a talk at noon, I think. And I woke up and I was a two, maybe even a one. I mean, it was just terrible. And I was so depressed and so down. And I've got to talk today and I'm supposed to be the gratitude guy and everything. And I went, wow. And I decided, well, you better practice what you preach, my friend. So I took the gratitude journal, went down to Starbucks, got a latte, wrote in the gratitude journal. And that bumped me up to about a four or five. I was still not doing well. Drove out to Burlington and did the talk. And this gal comes up and they're buying the books afterward. And the gal comes up and she's crying. And she just, can I give you a hug? And I said, sure. She gives me a hug. And I said, um, she says, you just changed my life. And I, I'd never heard that before. And I, I've heard it a lot since then. This was, I don't know, six or seven years ago. And it, it just stunned me. And she said, and I said, what was it? She goes, well, the story you told about Connor, that this, that, that, she went into some detail. And so I said, you know, um, it's just a mindset that can help you. And she said that I totally agree. Can I buy some journals and so forth? So she buys it. I pack up my stuff and I leave. And I go out, I go out and I get in the car. And I'm sitting in the car and I have a big smile on my face. And it's weird. Like if you ever look in the rear mirror and you smile yourself, it's kind of creepy. It's kind of like, what are, you, what are you smiling at? It's just the two of you. And it's like, if somebody saw me, they look at the weirdo in the car. He's like smiling at the guy in the mirror. But I was just thinking I had been a one or a two. And then I wrote my journal. This I just implore you to think about that, a four to a five. And then I made a difference and changed somebody's life. And I'm sitting in the car and I'm a nine to a nine and a half. And I drive back to Seattle from Burlington and realize I was never a drinker or smoker anyway, but I didn't have to take a drug. I didn't have to drink a, a beer or some hard booze, smoke a cigarette, do a joint, white powder, all this kind of stuff. I never understood all that. I didn't have to take any of that stuff to feel good. That's the power of how it can happen with a gratitude mindset. So, so do me a favor. Take your phones, get your cell phones out. Write this phone number down if you'd be so kind, 206 371-8309-206-371-8309. That is my text, my phone slash text number. Text me the number one thing you're grateful for. If you can only pick one thing, you, I guess you could put two, but what's the biggest thing that you're grateful for? And it might've been what you wrote on that card. It might be something different now that you've had a chance to think about it, but text that and I kind of like to see how people are thinking and get a little flavor from the audience. So, all right, give you guys another second for that. Okay, thank you for doing that. Like I said, it's just fun to see. I get some amazing answers on that and some things I'd never thought of. There's a lot of me you would expect, uh, your family and God and my children and things like this, but I get some amazing answers too uh, from what people are really incredibly grateful for. So uh, a couple more things and I'm gonna wrap up here in about five or 10 minutes. Uh, it's been said many years ago, if you wanna help yourself, help other people. And it's so true. And especially you take a time like this with this quarantine and all this, and you're thinking, gosh, I'm having a tough enough time just helping myself. Yeah, that's true. But when you get the feeling that you can go out, it's like in the holidays when people go out to food kitchens and help, and it makes such a big difference. And you realize you have all this, this abundance and somebody else doesn't. So, so here's another homework. I promise this is your last homework. I want you to, in the next couple of days, I want you to write down, you can write it down right now, the names of three people that you promise me that you will contact in the next two or three days to say hi, say hello, see how they're doing, tell them you're grateful to have them for your friend, uh, take them a meal, I guess you could have it sent by a, a Postmates or something like that, but write down three people you promise me that you will contact just to let them know that you're thinking about them and if there's any, you can support them. Because we're all in this kind of continuum and it's, it's interesting because there's always somebody above and beyond, above and below you or me or anybody else. So appreciating the ones that are behind you instead of worrying so much about who's in front of you can really help you with that a lot more. So, all right. So thank you for in, in being good on the homework too. So, okay. So a couple more things. I mentioned the Monday morning uh, minute. So take this number down, 42828. 42828 is the number. And if you'd like to get my Monday morning minutes, literally one minute every Monday morning, if you're not already getting it, type, uh, put in 42828 in the text and type the word grateful in the message and hit send and it'll ask you for your email and you'll be signed up. So the number is 42828 and the word in the message box is grateful.
Okay. So that will get you signed up for that. So a couple more things. People ask me a lot, how do I get more gratitude in my life? The, the, getting the Monday morning minute helps because that gets you a little reminder every single Monday. Uh, the gratitude journal, as I mentioned, is in the link. So you can click on that and get that through Amazon. Also, I'm going to mention a couple of things too that if I could ask of my audience today. Um, you can probably tell I'm really passionate about gratitude and, and speaking and so forth. So, and what it can do for people. In fact, I have a little thing on my computer. It actually says, slow down. It's actually on the right-hand side there and I hardly ever pay attention to it. But I would just ask if you could just think for a moment and think if anyone you know that would benefit from my talk, I would really appreciate it. And it, you might be part of a group or organization, a company, a corporation that brings in speakers to talk to their associates. And if you know anybody, if you could just put in your name and phone number in the chat and maybe just put speaking or put opportunity or something like that, and I'll contact you because you just never know um, that that's, I get so many great referrals from the chambers and, and all sorts of Qantas and Rotary and Lions and, and that's just really great. And then uh, the second thing is I want to quickly share is an opportunity to work together either one or one in a small group. If you're interested, I actually am a coach and I help a lot of people to see how gratitude principles can help you get a new trajectory on your life. So if, what I'd like to offer that I do, I offer to everybody that I speak to is what I call a complimentary consult, consultation. It's a 45 to 60 minute phone call and I do three things in that call. First, I like to give people more value for that hour by hearing their story and getting to know more about you and your challenges in your life. I'm sure there's many a challenge now. I can then give feedback from the conversation and provide thoughts and insights. And then secondly, I'm listening to see if we might be a fit to work together, possibly. I love working with people. I, I'm just very passionate about helping people. But I gotta, I've got to find people, I'm very selective, that really want to make changes in their life. If they just want to talk about it, I'm not interested. And then third, the last thing is it gives you a chance to interact with me and see if you might determine something that, that would benefit you. So in the chat box, if that was something that is you, again, name and phone number, and there's also a scheduling link I put on there too. And that is, um, you could just click on that and it schedules a one hour consultation with me. So, so thank you for that. So last couple of things, uh, one more thing in the chat, what was your biggest takeaway from today? Please put that in the chat and I wanna share that with people. Uh, I always get kidded about how fast I talk and I try to cram a lot of stuff into 30 or 40 minutes or whatever. But what was your biggest takeaway? Just put that in the chat and we'll maybe share that with a few people and then I'll uh, get to sharing gratitude and, and wrap up here. Let's see, what do we have here? You know, your check. Anybody, takeaways? people clicking there we go actually writing down what you're grateful for yeah that is so true there's again back to that plants it in your brain slow down and write it down thank you Shelly I'm going to pay attention to that myself slow down of course uh, daily reminders of gratitude and appreciation it's such a powerful mindset that I will tell you it can it has the power to really change you altogether so Thank you for those. And so last thing I want to talk about, and then I'm done. Sharing gratitude. There's something about people that get excited. They have a new house, a new job, a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend, a new car, whatever it is. People always want to share it with people. You got to see my new car. You got to meet my new girlfriend. You got to go see this movie I saw. It's really cool. So there's something about makes it so powerful. So get your cell phones out. And here's what I want you to do on your cell phones. I call this the four T's as in the letter T. Text, telephone, tweet, or tell. And I will tell you right now, most of you will text. And here's what I want you to do. I will give you 30 seconds for the last time. And I want you to text somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. And please use the word grateful. And I don't care who it is. And I'll give you 30 seconds to text somebody, tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. Go.
Okay, and when I'm in the junior highs and high schools, they've already done six or seven texts, you can imagine. I've never seen fingers fly so fast on a phone. And then I also go to senior centers quite a bit, and it's, I have to help them. It's kind of like hunt and peck, and it's kind of you know, just, well, let's get a text out here to somebody you're grateful for. So I try to judge how fast people are going to get it. So, but I, I do find this comical, though, because, again, when I'm in person, people come up and they show me their phone. They go, you look at this, Mr. Gratitude Guy. And it's the text from somebody they texted, and one of them said, I'm grateful for you, too. What do you want? And I went, wow, that's, that's kind of not the, the answer you're supposed to get here. And then another one recently was, um, are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> and by far, the one that always cracks me up, it was actually not far from you folks. It was in the Bothell High School Performing Arts thing, and the, the seats all went up at an angle. I was talking to a big group there. The company had their annual meeting there. And there was a gal about 10 feet away from me. I was on the stage and she was about 10 feet away on about the first or second row. And she was actually calling because it's telephone, text, tweet, or tell. And I could hear her talking and she goes, honey, I'm just so grateful for you. And, and I just appreciate you. I'm guessing her husband. Uh, and I just, I want to tell you how much I just love you and just fully grateful and appreciate. I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> No, wait, wait, it's not my idea. It's your idea. Gosh, don't wreck it on that. So I will just leave you with this. I tell people all the time, I challenge you to find something that works for you. If you could find something that works better, whether it's quarantine, uh, quarantining, going through this, or any tragedies in life or things that can help you, a mindset, an attitude. I talk about an attitude of gratitude. If you can find something that works as well or better, please let me know. I will tell you that if you apply an attitude of gratitude and write in a gratitude journal and apply some of the things I mentioned today, do some of those exercises consistently, it can totally change your life and it can totally get you through something like this incredible pandemic that we've gone through. And you can really come out on the other side, maybe even hitting the ground running and even being better. So I offer that as something that can change your life, transform your life. I think it saved my life and it can save yours too. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you, David. It's always fun to have you. So very much appreciate you coming back. Thank you, back. Kevin. Thanks, thank Dave. You. Thank you, guys. So uh, for your virtual token today, um, I actually stole this from uh, David's video post last, I want to say it was last Monday, if I remember mm -hmm. right. So one of my favorite movies, Extra Credit, if you can actually get the name of the character. So get busy living or get busy dying. Yeah. Got it. Red. All right. What is it, Steph? Red. Shawshank Redemption. Okay. What was the name of the character or the actor? Was that, yeah, Red. What was the name? Wasn't that his name? What was the name of the character or the Red? actor? Oh, the actor. Morgan Freeman. Nope. Other way around. Okay. The character in the movie? Yeah. That was his name, Red. No, it was Tim Robbins that said it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he wrote it in the letter, though. Oh, that's right. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Damn right. All right, you got to go watch that movie tonight. That's your homework. Yeah. So. I'm on it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I very much appreciate us joining us. So uh, next week, we will have another wonderful virtual session. So we had a speaker that was lined up today. He had a conflict. Uh, so he is actually going to be next month, uh, Stephen Johan, and he's going to be talking about the art of video blogging. So uh, probably something all of us could learn during this wonderful uh, COVID experience. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a blessed day. And thanks for sending the chat and recording, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Thank you Kevin. Care. Thank you. Really dressed up there, Bill. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> How you doing, Stephanie? I'm, not, I'm like, I lost my, th my uh, oh, there we go. I was like, I lost my, I accidentally moved my screen, so the, the leave button wasn't there. Have a good um, afternoon and enjoy the rest of the week. You too. Take care.
Um, let me know next time you're going to uh, drop by the office. I got a few receipts to give you. You got a few what? A re receipts to give you. Receipts. Okay. Hey, what are we ha are we having a meeting right now about the festival, or is that different login? One one ten. I think basically just talk about that we canceled it. I don't know what else. Yeah. Uh, Valerie wants to talk about, but. Okay, not a problem. Different different login number though. Okay. So you, you can't just hang out there. You have to go log in again. I have to. I actually have to go and do some work. <laughs> Talk to you later. All righty. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Bye. <laughs>